Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for the uh, ninth war of season 33. I'm having trouble with these intros, uh, but we have some pretty normal bands here and I had a cool war. It was one of these sort of hodgepodge, uh, just take these random nodes with good champions type war. Uh, we have Elsa coming back. She's going to be taking a Terax. That is a fight I used to take pretty often. And we haven't seen him placed on path four in that uh, recently, but he was there today. So it kind of just made sense. It was something I was very comfortable with. And then by throwing this Mole Man right before Terax, it was like, well, we have several rank four apocalypses, but I think I'm the one with the combo of Elsa and apocalypse. So that's why I am here. There's going to be a tricky mini boss a little bit after this, and then um, also a just a tiger fight that went pretty smoothly as well. So a little bit of a shorter war for me, uh, but we're starting off here with Mole Man, and I've taken Mole Man a lot with Apocalypse, and this strategy is kind of the same no matter what node you're on. So on this one, I have a heal block, so it just means. You know, there's not really much in terms of willpower healing that would happen on this node, you know, aside from these fatigue debuffs. So they just put the heal block on you so that you can't just like infinitely regen. But this does mean my crit rate is going to be lower during this fight. Uh, but like I said, the strategy is the same against Mole Man who has unstoppable armor. I kind of like to... Um, just throw the special ones because you have to watch out for that timer like right there he went unstoppable that also means he goes stun immune and this is the first node of path 4 which means that he's going to be getting furies on him that active fury when I knock him down he's going to get that it's 240% extra attack so that's why I'm losing a little bit of health here it's just sort of the block damage the chip damage um, and you know, this is an unramped APOC, so I made sure that with you know each special one, I was putting the new debuff on. Uh, we're just gonna maximize our damage slightly by having two distinct debuffs on him. Just bait his specials, just watch out for the unstoppable armor. And if you haven't watched me take Mole Man this season, the reason we stick to special ones is because they are shorter in length. That special two takes forever, and it's just harder to line it up so that you avoid the unstoppable armor timer. Additionally, the special one creates distance, whereas the special two, you end up right next to them. So God forbid he goes unstoppable, there may be a chance to get out of the way. So yeah, that's that's tips for Mole Man. Nothing much with the node there. It was just sort of a random Mole Man with unstoppable armor. And then here's the Terax. And the reason that I like Elsa so much here is that um, against Mole Man, for example, first of all, for Mole Man, he's a bleed immune. Uh, so that's some damage you won't be doing. And additionally, there's so many armor breaks and weaknesses coming your way that you're probably going to accidentally go into frenzy. Whereas Elsa um, basically gets her damage phase and her shrugging phase together. And when she shrugs on this node, she not only gets the precisions from her kit, but she also gets the passive fury. So it's just going to be over so fast. Now, the reason I got hit is because this guy was running... Um, unfazed which cracks me up i i would love to think that they knew there was an elsa player in ssx bg3 and they ran unfazed for that one node but i highly doubt that um it just happened to be a coincidence and you know elsa does technically evade and when she evades you know it could uh trigger unfazed so i did get smacked around a little bit there um got a little scary for a second but ultimately elsa took care of business because she hard counters that node I've taken way harder Terraxes on mini bosses with her before. She's a good counter. I mean, obviously Kingpin's a better counter, but hey, we love Elsa on this channel and always fun to bring her out for a safe fight like that. Now, next up, I think this could be the first time that I've taken this node since they've added Bubble Shield to it. Uh, but this is just gonna be another chance to grab a pretty easy uh, genetic code for Apocalypse, um, we see that nice regen at the beginning, it helps top us off, uh, even though we did heal up. Um, now, I did the power start one here just because it's Hit Monkey, we don't want to mess up. There's unblockable in this fight. It's just kind of like, 
you know, let's let's take care of business here. There, he dexed me. That was that was fun. Um, and this is gonna line up to not do full damage, unfortunately, but it does knock him down, and it does give us a little bit of power back. Um, and again, this fight is pretty safe, even like unboosted, to be honest. But it's war. It's hit monkey. Hitmonkey is known to cheat at times and just completely smack you. So, you know, we're going for the power back boost. We're going for everything we can to make this a pretty safe fight. And with that, he's going to go down no problem. And then we get another genetic code for Apocalypse. Now, this next one is going to be the scariest fight of the day. And now War and the game in general is kind of in this period of limbo where they have released the input beta, uh, which is... I do think generally is making the game easier to play. I feel like parries are landing a little easier. I feel like my dexes are feeling slightly smoother as well. Um, but, you know, I had it on for a few wars, and I know that's controversial, but I, I did use it in some wars because last season and over the off season I did, and it, it felt pretty good. Um, but then I had the death to Korg and I think it was on during that war now that I remember and I, I was just kind of like I think I'm going to be turning it off. Um, now I've taken this fight before it's basically because of burden of might we're just assuming that we're never going to have specials. So I start by heavying to create a little bit of distance. The last thing we want is to get backed up but I want to be doing like almost all of damage just through shocks. So there's a couple ways to land shocks you can obviously do it this way by just charging and then you know before getting too far back we can just you know throw those on him those are ticking for a lot like this is a rank 4 apocalypse that's melting him away the other way that we can land shocks is by purposefully triggering EMP um, right there okay this is where the inputs start going wacky I wasn't able to dex out of the special even though I was swiping back I got clipped on what I knew was a parry right there um, I probably could have thrown the special one there, honestly, for the power lock right there. I knew that bubble shield was coming, but he still hit me somehow. Um, right here, I have to take these blocked hits, but then we get some clutch dexes. One, two, three. Those pretty much saved the match, honestly. Um, but yeah, there, there were times that I was dexing and it wasn't registering. But now we're getting the timing right. We're getting that parry, taking the hit, backing out. Um, like I was saying before, by purposefully triggering EMP, right there we, we managed to catch the bubble shield, so that was super clutched when you saw that unblockable. Um, but yeah, Aspect of Evolution is killing us through the block right now, but we, the reason we're getting so many amp charges and so many shops is, is from purposefully triggering EMP. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, but that one really threw me for a loop. I know for sure there was the Miss Perry, um, but there were definitely some funky dexes as well. And I do think it's a pretty safe fight, but you do need to be able to rely on the controls um, because bubble shield is really important to keep track of. And one time uh, Dex didn't register, um, which really cost us a lot of health there. So fortunately the regen kicked in for Nebula and I was able to get it down, but it did take some sort of next level strats to get there. And finally, this is gonna be a pretty straightforward fight. It's just Tigra on hard knock life. And it does have the strike counter stuff for the block penetration, but you know, against a rank four, it's not really gonna matter. I don't wanna say, you know, ignore strike counter, but we're, we're gonna kind of take care of business with the strike counter just by throwing our special two with power back boosts and getting all this power back. Uh, you gotta practice her dexes because, you know, getting hit by her unblockable specials is a huge pain. You could really hurt yourself there. So notice we only have three genetic codes, so we're, we're only at two debuffs. Um, but now if I'm smart, I'll put the weakness on, and I was paying attention enough to put that weakness on. And honestly, that third debuff was enough to get her down. So yeah, when Apocalypse doesn't have four, you wanna try to do special two, special one, special one, and then alternate the special one, medium or light ender, so you get all three of those debuffs, and then she goes down. So no danger there when you have a rank four Apocalypse. And that's gonna be the end of my war. It was just a very straightforward war uh, with five fights that lined up well for people on my roster. And yeah, this is gonna be the end of the uh, third week of Alliance War. So this is war number nine. And at this juncture, um, I'm not sure when this video is going to come out, but at this juncture, after three weeks, we are four and five, 
and we've barely snuck into the master's bracket for top 20. So that to me means if we go two and one, um, maybe one and two, but I think we really need to go two and one in that last week. And if we do that, then we will actually land in Masters most likely. So pretty exciting that we had a little bit of a comeback with a couple wins. Uh, it was fun to bring Elsa again for a brief fight and Apocalypse was just being normal Apocalypse. So that's the end of this one. I hope you all had a great week and I'll catch you in the next one.